Why can't girls just love girls? That sounds a little weird. That's not how I meant it. Hello everybody, I'm Catherine, welcome back. And today I have a review for Grave Mercy by Robin Lefevers. So I initially got a copy of this as an e-arc through NetGalley years ago, like years. And while I tried to read it at the time, I just found I could not get into it and then my galley expired. So I wasn't actually able to finish it at that time. And since I didn't get the best go through from it, I didn't find that I felt the need to actually go out and either get it again from the library or buy a copy for myself until now. So I was looking for good books on Audible to use my credits for and I remember actually having a conversation with my good friend Seabrook about this book specifically um, when either the second or the third book was being released and she was really excited because she had pre-ordered it and it had come in the mail. So I figured, you know what, Seabrook has never really steered me wrong for any book recommendations that we've talked about. I'm gonna give this another try, but on audio. In case you haven't noticed, I've been on a huge audio kick. I find it is the easiest way for me to actually get reading done, um, since I don't always have a lot of set time that I can sit down and just read instead of having to do something else at the same time. I very quickly with this book made it past the like 5% that I initially got stuck after and after that I was honestly hooked. I don't know why now it was so difficult for me to get into this book the first time around when I tried reading it. I just, I'm boggled. I don't know. The world of Ismay really fascinates me. Um, I, this is really horrible. I'm bad at like medieval type areas. Geography, that's the word. So when I was reading, I was trying to figure out where Brittany was in relation to like England and France. And at first I thought it was a part of England and then I was like, oh, maybe not. And yeah, so I still don't know where it is, but I know it's somewhere in Europe and yeah. What really fascinated me about this book was the correlation of religion and death. Now I just, I found this fascinating, the fact that they actually worshipped death in the convent that Ismay is sent to in the very beginning of the book. And of course, you know, she becomes death's handmaiden and is basically this kick-ass assassin who is like impervious to all poisons, which I also thought was pretty awesome. Like. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I spent the vast majority of this book wanting Ismay and her Duke dude who <laughs> is like her partner in crime at the castle. Um, I was just waiting for them to get together. I don't know if it's because I'm just this like inner romantic, but I was counting down until their first kiss and then I was super excited. And I was like, yes, it happened. This book had a lot more than just the supernaturalness and the romance that I initially thought it was going to have. There was a lot of mystery and intrigue and honestly I was on the edge of my seat for a lot of it, especially the second half. You are not only dealing with who is trying to betray the Duchess, but you're also dealing with trying to figure out who is poisoning people and why and what everyone's motives are and just craziness happens like wow a lot a lot happens in this book which is a good thing because considering it's a trilogy the next two books are actually about Ismay's fellow sisters in the convent then actually about her although I'm really hoping other stuff is mentioned about her and the fact that she's married to what's his face and yeah because I totally just want them to have little babies together of course, on top of all of that as well, you're dealing with Ismay and her realizations that everything she's been taught might not necessarily be how it is. She's learning about bias and she's learning about being true to yourself and about what Mortain actually really wants. So 
it was actually really awesome. Ismay is also a kick-ass character. She really does not need help from anyone, although she knows when to ask for help, usually. She's one of those really strong female characters that I love to see, especially in young adult books that younger readers and older readers are both enjoying. This is definitely the type of book that I will be passing along to my 12 year old cousin when she's maybe a little older and not quite so innocent because honestly I don't think she could comprehend some of what's going on in this book. I'd also have to get a physical copy first too. And it might actually have to be me be made into a movie for her to want to take notice of it because anytime I introduce her to good bucks she kind of just puts them on a shelf and doesn't touch them. I also like the fact that Ismay is able to show compassion and she's able to see the bigger picture. Sometimes I find that females especially, although they do seem to be the majority of you know main characters that I am reading in books, but females especially can be a little narrow-minded a little catty when it comes to other women, as of course women are in real life. Let's face it, that's just the way it is a lot of the time. Her being able to show compassion and empathy and just, yes. There's other words, I just can't think of them. This sometimes happens after I've been submersed in class for three hours and I have psychological babble going all through my head, but anyway. This is definitely going to be a book, if not a series, I'm going to have to read the next two to say series, but a book that I'm going to recommend to people, especially since it can probably technically be read as a standalone, which is nice. I, that's what I love about companion series and especially the first, first books in companion series. The fact that their standalone quality is a lot higher than just a typical series book. I gave this book five star on Goodreads and for good reason. It kept me entertained, it kept me enthralled. And considering the audiobook is something like 14 hours long, it did take me quite a while to get through it. Although probably not as long as I would have thought it'd take. So technically according to Goodreads, it took me about a month, but that was also over, um, me being in Costa Rica, which I know I did not listen to it. That was over the fact that I had midterms, which I definitely listened to it during those. So all in all, I think it took me a lot less than a month, like maybe a week. Yeah, a week sounds about right. Now, of course, the only downfall of reading this book and enjoying it is the fact that I'm going to have to search out a hardcover copy of it for my shelves. And I've also already used a credit to buy the second book on Audible so that I can listen to it. I'm really, really excited for that one. And I really hope that Ismay is mentioned at least in passing in it. So that's it for me on Grave Mercy by Robin Lefevers. Definitely, definitely a book you should check out if you haven't already. Especially if you're not necessarily into the paranormal. It's not the main stream throughout the entirety of it. It's more like an extra added on. Just guess past like the first couple chapters where it's really like mentioned and you're fine. So until next time guys, happy reading!